611 is truly an icon, that, that she is a legend. Yes, it's a really exciting time. Uh, you know, the 611 hasn't run on a mainline railroad since 2017. And it's really amazing that we can bring it back to Virginia. You know, I'm digital content producer Jacob Fife, and today I'm here at the Virginia Museum of Transportation to learn about the historic Norfolk and Western 611. Now, the Norfolk and Western 611 is one of the most beloved historic trains currently in the world, and is the last Class J locomotive of its type that's still around. Not only is it still around, it still runs. So I spoke with Mandy Flynn. She is the executive director of the Virginia Museum of Transportation. And she told me a little bit about the history of the 611. It was built on May 29, 1950. It was designed, constructed, and maintained by the Norfolk and Western Railway at the East End Shops here in Roanoke, Virginia. The Roanoke Shops were vital because that's where 611 was built built and maintained. Um, so without those, we wouldn't have the 611, at least being a native here of Roanoke. It burns coal and weighs 494,000 pounds. It's the most modern steam passenger locomotive ever built, and it's hailed as the finest steam passenger locomotive in the world. Um, it's, it's known for its speed and power, uh, recognizable by its colors, the midnight black, Tuscan red and gold, uh, it's bullet nose, uh, it's 484 wheel configuration, um, and then it can travel up to 110 miles per hour pulling 15 cars. It is it is quite a special engine. It was in service from 1950 to 1959. It was built right here in Roanoke, as I mentioned. It was number 11 of 14 J-Class Streamliners ever built. So that was significant in itself. And then it's the last to operate. Um, it retired from passenger rail service in 1959, and it is the only one still in existence. So it's the only one that escaped the scrapyard. Um, it is designated as the official steam locomotive of Virginia and also as a National Historic Mechanical Engineering landmark. So there are just a lot of, like I said, it's just a really special engine. There, There's so much about it. Um, that sets it apart from other engines. We definitely want to carry out our mission to preserve and promote and protect this, this special engine. The city of Rhino gifted the engine to the Transportation Museum in 1962. Mm -hmm. setting up the excursions, there was a lot of worry that it wouldn't even happen at all. So I talked to Steve Powell, he is the president of the Buckingham Branch Railroad, and he told me about what work went into making the 611 the focal point of their fall 2023 excursion season. And he talks a little bit about what the 611 means to him and Buckingham Branch Railroad. Yes, it's a really exciting time. Uh, you know, the 611 hasn't run on a mainline railroad since 2017. And it's really amazing that we can bring it back to Virginia. You know, but the 611 has been something that's talked about you know, with rail fans and the Buckingham Branch Railroad for a lot of years. Uh, we've had conversations with members of the Virginia Museum of Transportation uh, for, for many, many years. You know, everybody just kind of wondering if it's something that could ever happen. The 611 is, is, is an icon, uh, and it's it's the last of its breed. Was steam engines have been around or had been around since the early 1800s, and then the final uh, versions of steam engines were built in the 1950s, the very early 1950s. And this was the last of uh, the steam engines that were built by the Norfolk and Western Railroad. So, you know, in, in looking back on these engines, it's just amazing the technology and the innovation and craftsmanship that people had back then of literally building these engines just piece by piece, one piece at a time, 
all these parts were built uh, in, in Roanoke, in the shops in Roanoke. I mean, this wasn't a mass production kind of thing. And so just looking at, and appreciating the engineering behind uh, these, these mechanical marbles is, is very important. But then also looking at them, looking at the past where we come from, it gives us the opportunity to look where we are, where we're going. We're starting out of Goshen because uh, it's a place where we have uh, built a new uh, station to where we can launch these excursions. And it gives the people the ability to be able to come up and be close to the locomotive, uh, you know, get pictures right up next to it, can spend some time around it and really appreciate it, what it's worth. Um, then when you get on the engine, or excuse me, get on the train, um, we'll be pulling out of Goshen. Uh, We'll make our way up to our main line. And then once we're on our main line, uh, the 611 is going to give them the opportunity to, to show a little bit of what she has. This is the first time that it's going to have uh, main line service in Virginia since 2017. The 611 is an important piece of American history and the fact that it's the last Clash J left is amazing. The fact that it runs is even better. And it's, it's amazing to see that there are people who are dedicating their time, their money, their resources to see this thing not only stay around for another 100 years or so, but they also make it run so that other people and newer generations can appreciate the 611 like they did you know, it's not every day you get to have one of the most iconic steam engines ever built as your background. This is just an absolutely amazing experience to be here watching the 611. Well, we've been very fortunate to be able to get 611 restored back in 2015. And since then, we've kept it hot and kept it running throughout Virginia and other states, too. We had to run for a little while in Strasburg, Pennsylvania. We we're very fortunate to have opportunity to, to run up there. Uh, we ran in Spencer, North Carolina for a short period of time, too. And uh, we finally were able to get it back here to Virginia, which has been our goal all along. This site was originally an iron ore mine site, and uh, they had a furnace here called Victoria Furnace. So that's how we came up with the name Victoria Station. That was back in the 1880s when that was taking place. And it ran until the 1920s. But um, the, the, the significance here is, you know, we were able to find a site here in Virginia, in Goshen, that, that allows us to not be on the main line, but be on a secondary line, a branch line, and we were able to put the station at this site. So I've been enamored with this engine for 50 years at least, and I was fortunate enough to, to be asked to be on the board uh, before we got it operating again, so I was uh, working with the inception of that, and it's, it's been a wonderful opportunity. It's one of the high points in my life to, to be able to uh, be involved with the 611 and put this operation together. I'm very proud to be able to be part of it. Um, it's an honor to be part of it and to work with the people that I get to work with. The community around 611 is varied. Um, it's all ages, all backgrounds. Um, you've got people who their grandfather was an engineer or helped build it or just worked for the railroad even. Um, you've got people who are, who are general rail fans who, who follow it for different reasons. Um, you know, children, older people, you, there's really no specific group. It's everybody. Everybody, I, I don't know of anybody who doesn't like 611. You know, I'm not as knowledgeable about trains enough to be able to talk in detail about these, but just look at them. They're huge, they're polished. There's so much power behind them. And it just takes you back in time to imagine when this train was being built right here in Roanoke, the hard work that went into putting each of these bolts designing it carefully so that nothing would go wrong and people would be safe during their journey. And the fact that they are still here, still working, still usable, still being cared for. Absolutely amazing. Another person I talked to is Joel Gillespie. 
he is a train enthusiast who picked up photography and an interest in trains after seeing a 611 for the very first time. I think that kind of is where I got hooked on it a little bit. And then I've always enjoyed them, you know, as I've gotten older, but I think my interest level peaked again, probably the height of COVID. Um, I started doing photography as a hobby. And then when COVID came around, I started doing train photography. And so we were traveling down through Roanoke, Virginia, where it was, was obviously built. And we were stopping in there for, for lunch one day. And, and my dad took us over across the street to the, to the museum. And, and this was probably when I was seven or eight years old. And, we took a look at the train and, and I think that's where I really got hooked with seeing a, a, a massive engine like that and multiple others next to it in person. And since then I've seen it three or four other times sitting there and then once on the tracks. You know, just picking up train photography as a hobby just a few years ago, you know, not knowing a lot about trains in general, about, you know, what types of trains there are, you know, to, to realize something like that is so prominent, not only in, you know, Virginia's railway history, but American history. Hopefully that they'll realize, you know, when they're photographing it or, you know, riding on the train that's getting pulled by, hopefully they will realize, you know, they're, they're part of, of history. And, and it's, it's history that's doing great. It's not going anywhere anytime soon that we know of. And it's just, it's something really special to be a part of. My hope would be that people would get from the experience that 611 is truly an icon, that, that she is a legend. Um, one out of 14 J-Class engines still surviving and operating and the only one. And just to know that she's something very special. You don't realize it maybe until you see it. Um, but it's, it's just, it's something that's really hard to put into words. Um, how special it is, and just watching the power, the smoothness of its running. Um, there's just nothing like it. it. It is definitely one of a kind. So one of the questions that I've asked everyone I've interviewed is what does the 611 mean to them? Now, after putting all of this together, I'm asking myself the same question. What does the 611 mean to me? Well, the 611 means a lot to me now. I went into this not knowing much about it. I appreciated the history of it. I appreciated the engineering, the technology, but now I appreciate it for a hundred different reasons. And I'm very lucky to have had the opportunity to be up close and personal with this engine to talk to people whose lives have been touched by this engine and people who literally have gotten into whole new hobbies and careers simply because they saw it. So it's an action. So the 611 means a lot to me. And I hope that after watching this report and reading this story, it means a lot to you too.